Okay, so hello everybody. This session will be about 2 plus 2 system community colleges and our panelists will share more information. We're uh, having our today presentation. We'll start with uh, the College of Lake County and Colleen Gray, who is representing uh, the college. Uh, and I'm giving the floor to you for slides. Uh, please feel free for other students who are attending. Feel free to ask your questions in chat. Select panelists and attendees when you're asking a question, or you can leave them in Q&A we will reply to them after the presentation. So Colleen, you can uh, go ahead and start your presentation. Well, it's uh, an honor to be here. So I'm gonna start my uh, PowerPoint slide. So first I wanted to talk to you guys about like what is a community college um, as we see it in the United States. Um, a community college is a higher education institution that primarily serves the area that it surrounds. So in our, uh, in the state of Illinois, each county has its own community college. Uh, community colleges offer um, traditional academic classes like your math, your history, your English 101 that transfer to four-year college degrees and uh, four-year colleges and universities. But they also have um, programs for people that want to do vocational skills. And they also serve uh, most community colleges um, uh, offer events to the community like uh, swim classes to children, art classes in the summer. Uh, community colleges have grown in popularity um, for both uh, domestic and international students. Um, and a lot of interest has started um, from abroad because community colleges provide the same level of education as you would receive at a university, but at a much lower rate um, for tuition. So when people say the two plus two program, um, what I, it's to explain what that means is to get your bachelor's degree, it's usually four years of study. So you would do two years at a community college and um, you would do your 100 level and your 200 level courses at a community college. Um, typically students achieve their associate's degree at a community college, and then they transfer to a university where they would do their upper level courses. So your 300 level and your 400 level courses that are mostly um, focused on your specific majors. So if you're studying engineering, these would be mostly your engineering courses at a university. And then once you complete those two years, you have completed your bachelor's degree. So that's why we call it a two plus two program. Two years at a community college where you do your general courses and you focus on your major courses too, but you mostly focus on your general education credits. And then two years at a university, which is a total of four years and you have your bachelor's degree. So what kind of education do community colleges offer? workforce development education and traditional education. So we have, at our community college, we have a lot of hands-on careers, like automotive repair, welding, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, HVAC. So these are all um, vocational workforce, like courses that you literally use your hands. So we have an automotive repair center um, where people can come in and um, fix cars and you normally only need a two year degree to be able to move from, uh, to get that certificate that you need to, to have that career. And then if you're looking for a traditional pathway of courses to get your bachelor's degree, we have um, your gen ed is what most we call it in uh, the US, your general education credits, where if you're studying um, sciences like biology to architecture to engineering, we have um, the, the beginning levels of those courses, the like 100 level and 200 level courses on campus. What is nice though, is that the course level and the amount of students that are in your courses um, is relatively small because we have small classroom sizes. So the kinds of degrees that you can get from a community college is that community colleges, um, they have not all, but some. Um, our college, we have an English language instruction program. So you can just come to a community college and study English language um, and that's it. And then you can go back home. 
Um, also, if you do not have an IELTS or TOEFL score, you can start out your education career learning English language uh, instruction, and then you can transfer into taking uh, your degree program classes. That's majority of how our students start out. So if they don't have a TOEFL score that's particularly high, um, they'll take a English language instruction courses and then they'll transfer over and start taking their general education uh, courses. So we um, also uh, offer associate of arts, which is would be a bachelor's degree in arts. You would get your associates with us, which is like your foundation uh, education credits in humanities, and then we also have an associate of science, which would be like a bachelor's in science. And then we also have an associate in applied sciences, and these would be your vocational uh, courses where you only need two years. So why do we, why would you consider going to a community college? It's more cost effective. Uh, tuition um, at a community college, for example, at mine is under $11,000 a year for 24 credit hours. Um, versus at a university that would be nearby, which would be $30,000 a year. Um, we are open access and we have open admissions. So we, um, since we serve the community, we are able, to, we have a lot of resources um, for the community, but we're also able to provide lower tuition rates to uh, all of our students, both international and domestic. We have smaller classroom sizes. So students are usually in a classroom of 20 or under. Um, we have additional, just like um, universities, we have OPT opportunities. So you can do your two-year degree, then do OPT, um, up a, and then you can go and transfer to a university. We have, um, we have agreements with uh, universities, so it can be a seamless transfer. So you would do your two years with us and then um, transfer to a university that we, you can go to any university you want, but there are seamless transfer ones where we have agreements where you can just easily transfer all your credits to the next school and they're ready for you to start your bachelor's degree. And also students that um, need additional support, uh, sometimes start out at a university and then come down to a community college um, because they need additional help with their GPA. Because being in a classroom size of maybe 300 is a lot harder to voice your concerns or to learn one-on-one um, -on -one, um, or to get the support that you need. And a community college can offer that for students that are um, having a little bit more difficult with a transition to uh, university. So for admissions, we have, we, um, there's very limited requirements for my particular institution. Uh, we don't require um, an SAT score. All we would require is that you have a high school degree or a secondary school certificate. Um, we do not require any IELTS score since we teach uh, English language uh, instruction. And so to, it's also a lower tuition rate. So you need a lower amount of funding to show for your US visa to be admitted. Um, and then community colleges have tremendous benefits. Um, they have coaching for academic success. So if you're not sure what you wanna study, there, there are people on campus that are able to give you support in, in being able to help you determine what you wanna study. Um, community colleges really help students um, transfer out into the real world, giving you actual hands-on experience. Um, and we have academic advisors that help you navigate school because it can be really difficult to, to, in a school with thousands and thousands of students to know where to start. And community colleges have that ability to do a one-on-one -on -one interactive um, uh, uh, interaction with you to support you. And um, our particular schools, we're really ex um, inclusive and we have opportunities for students that have disabilities. Um, we offer tutoring for our students for free and our classes are extremely diverse. So you would go to school with people from all sorts of backgrounds. And that's all I have for my presentation. Thank you, Colleen. I think that Chris already joined us uh, from Orange Coast, uh, college and uh, I would like to 
see if you have, you can enable your microphone and your camera, say hi to us and uh, we can move. Oh, you're not, okay. I should have fixed that now. Yes, so we have Christopher here as well. And uh, we will now give a floor to you. You can present your slides if you have them. Hi, Christopher. Hi, hi everyone. Sorry, just logging in right now. Yeah, no problem. Okay. okay. Yeah, and for attendees, uh, any questions about community colleges education and two plus two system, please uh, write in chat or in Q&A. I just want to say that I'm really um, happy that I know students who are studying in both of your colleges from Belarus. So it is possible. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we are very excited for students to be there. Uh, so it is really a great option for international students. Please feel free to ask your questions in Q&A. We actually just, I just got um, a new visa approval for a student named, uh from Belarus uh, yes, last week. He is in our CCC program and I know him very well and yes. uh, super exciting to have him. In your oh, I, uh, Igor, so sweet. Yeah. And I, know <laughs> and I got to meet him in person. Have... It was very awesome. So I like, I, I yeah. mean him have like a, we're very, we email each other a lot. We're very, very yeah. close. Um, we're always very happy to know that our students are studying in uh, specific universities when we hear from them and in community colleges. So I know Christopher also has some Belarusian students on campus. We, we do. We have a couple at, yeah. at OCC. So, um, okay. So I do have a couple of slides to show mm -hmm. um, about community college. Um, sorry, because I'm just picking up. Have we started presenting already or we haven't done yet? Yeah, we'll I have have presented. Presented. presentation. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. All right. You can share, you, you can spend around like seven to 10 minutes for slide. If okay. a slide is fine. So you can start presenting right now. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that right now. Thank you so okay, much. Thank you. Okay. All right, can everyone see my slide here? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we kind of, I, I think we've already kind of explained how the community college system works, but just to kind of reiterate, community colleges are very common in the US. About 50% of American students do attend community colleges, and it's roughly about 96,000 international students. Um, so again, this is just the pathway for most students, students doing the two plus two. Um, but specifically what I wanted to talk about is just the California community colleges. Um, so the California community colleges is actually the largest system of public higher education in the world with 115 campuses. Uh, 2.5 million students and about 400,000 class sections. So just the impact of the California Community Colleges, it's a very common place where students actually begin their undergraduate studies um, because we just educate so many students. Um, but we have really great resources. In fact, the California Community Colleges are the most funded public institutions in the state of California. And really, again, like all community colleges, we really just do focus on access. Um, so by taking away all the barriers of coming to a community college, um, so again, no SCT, no ACT, same thing. Um, and you can just come when you're ready. So whenever you're ready to pursue your undergraduate studies, you can come to a community college. And community colleges are so um, common in, in California that about 50% of students who graduate from our four-year public universities are transfers from the California community colleges. Okay. Now, a lot of students ask who attends community colleges? And I wanted to share the slide just to show that, you know, we do attract some of future talents, you know, coming to the California community colleges. So uh, these are some of our most notable alumni. And you probably are familiar with some of these individuals here. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be famous to be successful, um, but I just kind of want to highlight this because a lot of students don't know, you know, who actually has attended a community college before, but a lot of different familiar names. So if you watch Star Wars, the um, director George Lucas went to a two-year community college. So did the uh, actor Tom Hanks. Um, if you have an iPhone, most likely the device that you're using to view this presentation um, was because of Apple, right? So Steve Jobs actually, actually went to De Anza College in Northern California, um, including the other co-founder of Apple, Steve Wozniak. 
um, the actress Gabrielle Union, um, probably the biggest firework in the sky, Katy Perry went to a community college. Um, the director, John Singleton, my famous alumnus at Orange Coast College is the fashion designer, Paul Frank. And actually really fun fact about Paul Frank is that when he was drawing Julius the monkey, he was sitting in class at OCC and now he teaches fashion at our school. And also the former governor and the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So just kind of to share about how the community colleges make, are part of the California state system is that there's four, three systems of public higher education in California. So we have the research system, the University of California, the four-year system, and of course, the two-year community colleges. And we do have transfer programs with the University of California, California State, and other universities as well. But I just wanted to reiterate that community colleges and transfer, you don't need a transfer agreement to transfer to a four-year university. As long as the community college is regionally accredited, um, you're able to transfer to any university. So don't get stuck on whether or not this school has a partnership with this school. Again, it is so common. It's as if you're asking, can you go to university after high school? Well, you can certainly go to any university after you complete your two years or even one year at a community college, it really depends. But again, the benefit of attending a community college is that especially for many international students, if you are needing more, you know, in, to improve your English proficiency, you wanna save some money um, or just really wanna explore what your options are, this is a really great opportunity for you. So there's, again, it's up to you, but you can go to any university that you want to, okay. I just wanted to share, this might not be relevant to you, but I think one of the things that we like to share is that applying as a transfer student to a university is a lot less selective than applying as a first year student. And again, a lot of our international students have benefited from this because um, we've taken a lot of the barriers for admissions to our institutions, but a lot of the barriers are taken down for students to enter university through transfer. And the University of California is a really good example of that as it's it is the most selective public university system, probably in the United, in the United States, but as a transfer, it's a lot less selective. All right. And again, the value of community colleges, you definitely save a lot of money by coming to community college as well, which we typically, we share over and over and over again. Okay. It's pretty simple to apply to the California community colleges, basically just be 18 years old, meet our English proficiency requirement. You can take the Duolingo. In fact, I have a, a coupon code to take the Duolingo test for free. So if any of you come visit my booth um, and I can go ahead and share you that information, how you can take the Duolingo, you can send it to any other, any institution that accepts it for free. Okay. Now, a lot of students ask, what is the experience at a California community college or community college in general? And I like to use four adjectives to really describe what a community college experience is. Again, it's comprehensive, holistic, interdisciplinary, and global. And what I mean by that in terms of comprehensive is that we offer basically everything. So whatever you want to do, we most likely have it. Holistic is not just about your academics, but we do have you know, really great community support. We have clubs, um, organizations, honor societies, research opportunities, actually. Um, you can work on campus. So, and you also can combine a lot of these things as well. You know, so for a really good example is that community colleges have what's, have what's called career technical programs. In fact, some of our career technical programs, you really just need those degrees a two-year degree in order to get into the workforce. And with a lot of these two-year career technical programs, you want to learn how to do something. So I use engineering as a really good example. We have a programs at community college called welding technology. And what welding technology is, is basically building things. So I always often tell students who are engineering majors to maybe take a welding class because as an engineer, you need to learn how to make something. Um, and a lot of opportunities to spur on by students to just have a diversity and also well-rounded profile. In fact, a lot of our university students from other universities come to our community colleges to utilize a lot of the resources that we have that they don't have at their universities. Um, and also global, meaning that, you know, we support so many international students and it's not just ex exclusive to the California community colleges, although we host about 20,000 international students, um, but community colleges, especially if you're, my biggest tip, actually, there's a lot of community colleges out there, right? 
my biggest tip if you're looking for a community college is to find a community college that is going to be supportive of international students, especially if you're currently on an F1, if you're attending on an F1 student visa, because you're going to have um, some things that we need to really guide you in as you are a student at our institution. So, you know, at the Education USA Fair, there are community colleges, and I really urge you to think of us as really strong options because we're here for a reason. We are here to support you, and we just have the resources available to really help our international students. Okay. All right, so just a little bit about Orange Coast College. Um, again, we're part of the California Community College system. Um, we're located in Costa Mesa, California, which is between Los Angeles and San Diego. Um, Orange County, again, is a very popular location. Um, we're about 15 minutes from Disneyland Resort. But we're also a very comprehensive community college. We offer more than 130 different programs, hosting 20,000 students. Again, we have some students from Belarus, um, from Georgia, and also Azerbaijan, which I know is today's audience today. Um, but again, we basically have everything. And some of our key highlight programs is that, or some of the things that we're known for actually are things that are related to our location. So anything nautical, so we have the largest two-year marine science program in the United States. And also we have the only student-led research aquarium in the state of California, and that also includes uh, universities as well. Um, we have the only school of sailing and yachting in the United States too. So I always tell students, if you wanna become like a boat captain, you know, we do offer that. We have a pilot training program, so you, get, so you can become a commercial pilot as well. I mean, we just have so many things going on at our school and I can talk a lot about OCC, but one thing that we really do celebrate actually at our schools are international students. In fact, the photos that you saw today were taken by our international students. And that's what I wanted to really showcase that our students are talented. You know, they are very involved on our campus and they're just very enthusiastic of sharing their OCC stories. So if you want to learn more about that, come visit us on, follow us on Instagram at OCC Internationals. In fact, that Duolingo code that I was talking about, if you follow us, I'll go ahead and DM you the code for you to take the test for free. But we have a lot of really great, you know, live events that we host for our international students. Um, you know, are the latest updates. It's really just a central hub for us to provide the latest updates about our institution. So go ahead and follow us on Instagram. For more information, again, I'd rather show you OCC than tell you about OCC, um, but go ahead and do that as well. All right, so that kind of just ends my short little presentation about uh, the California Community Colleges and Orange Coast College. And um, I, I don't know if we're gonna move on to the, if there's a Q and A session, but thank you so much for listening in and good luck to you and stay well. Thank you, Chris. And uh, Chris uh, and uh, Colleen, I think we can now address some questions that our students were sending in uh, chat and in Q&A. So I figured out that another Chris is actually a student. So it's good to have Christopher you here, <laughs> not <laughs> the student I was trying to promote and make present. Um, so please keep writing your questions to uh, chat and to uh, the Q&A. So people, um, one of the questions that uh, we have in our Q&A part is if your person is interested in scholarships, what kind of scholarships can um, are available in your institutions, in your colleges, and in general, uh, in community colleges, what are uh, available financial aid or scholarships uh, that international students can rely on? Um, so at our community college, uh, the College of Lake County, we um, offer first year international students um, a $3,000 scholarship, but we do not um, offer full scholarships for students. Um, because our tuition is so low, we are not able to cover it completely, but we um, have other scholarships that students can apply for. Um, um, what about you, Chris? Yeah, kind of in the same boat. Because our um, tuition cost is already low, we have very limited scholarships for incoming students. Um, most of our scholarships that we have at OCC are for um, continuing students. Um, so we do offer about $500,000 to our students, anywhere from, let's say, $1,000 to $10,000. They're stackable, so you can earn more than one. They are cash value, so you can use them for any expense that you want to. Many of our students do use it when they transfer to a university, so technically, I guess it is a transfer scholarship. Um, but it's really just based on what you completed at, the, at our school. So, But for incoming students, we don't 
typically offer scholarships. Well, one unique opportunity that we have, and you might want to look into this too, um, is that for schools, universities, and community colleges that do have on-campus housing, uh, many of us do have what's called a resident advising program. Um, so what that basically means is that you live on campus, you manage a floor on campus, and if you're selected for this program, you can actually live on campus for free. So there's different ways that you can really just manage your finances. Um, community colleges too also offer tuition payment plans. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to pay it all at one time. Um, so, I mean, a lot of students are kind of stuck on the idea of just, I need to get a scholarship to come, but you have to kind of look at how, you know, resources that we can provide to you after you enroll and also ways to help manage your payment. Uh, to build off what Chris said, um, I, as far as payment program, yeah. We do like a four month payment program for each semester. So you pay each semester within four months. And typically our students are paying like 1000 to 1200 for that monthly payment. So um, it, it comes in slowly. You're not having to pay, you know, a large amount at one point. You're slowly taking um, the opportunity to pay it down the tuition. Thank you. Most of other questions were also regarding scholarships. Are there any like requirements special for scholarships for to apply for this uh, program that you were mentioning or are applicants considered automatically for them? How it works in your institutions? For my institution, I give all new students a $3,000 scholarship and there isn't any requirements besides being a new F1 visa holding student. But like just like Christopher, uh, Christopher said, after that, then we have merit-based ones. So those would be based on what you're studying and there's thousands of dollars in scholarships. It's just, um, you have to find the one that best fits you. But we have an international student advisor that works with our students to help them apply for the scholarships that best fit them, whether it's their major or, um, it, you know, something else that makes them unique that they can apply for. Okay, thank you. We have another question uh, from uh, Denise in Q&A. Uh, is, is there an opportunity to work, uh, especially if a person won't be uh, yet 18 to pay for education? So what are these options and especially for international students uh, and how it usually works in terms of have an extra work or working in summer to cover expenses. Yeah, sure. Let me go ahead and start with that. So um, for um, Orange Coast College, um, we have on-campus student employment. So just remember on your F1 student visa, you can only work on campus. So for our school, you can work up to 19 hours a week and we pay roughly about $15 an hour. Now, keep in mind, it has impact, COVID has impacted our on-campus student employment. So we're currently virtual for the fall and the spring, but hopefully once we come back to full on-campus instruction, we'll have a lot more campus opportunities. Um, other opportunities too. So some of our programs that we do have um, at OCC and many community college, again, I mentioned about the career technical types of programs. There's an internship component built into a lot of these programs. Um, so you can do what's called CPT, their career practical training. So if you have to do an internship for your program to graduate, then there's some work opportunities there. And I know we most we talked about this probably before. Um, you can do OPT after your to your undergraduate degree. So whether you get a certificate or a associate's degree, you can work full time after you complete those degrees. Uh, many students will use that as a gap year to before they transfer. And you think about it and put it in perspective. A lot of students who do OPT maybe earn about twenty to $40,000 a year. I think that's kind of a fair, you know, kind of, you know, salary that students will earn. If you put it in perspective by earning that kind of money while you're OPT, you basically just paid off your tuition for the first two years of your studies. So, um, well, to answer your question really short, yes, there are, there are job opportunities, but it's within the limitations of your F1 student visa. Uh, I to build off what Chris said. Get, yes, we, we offer students employment on campus. Um, we have a center for international education where we um, hire peer mentors and we uh, usually have 10 students employed doing that. But like he said, like that is an F1 visa student, you are coming to the United States to study and you're only allowed to work um, on college campus and you're only allowed to work a maximum of 20 hours a week during the school year. So if you're trying to pay for college while working, you might not make enough money um, every two weeks or, or you know, whenever your paycheck is to be able to pay for school and pay for housing. So I wouldn't guarantee 
working on campus as a way of financially supporting yourself. I actually do. I do have a, I have a YouTube video that I'm going to share with you guys. Actually, not you can watch it on your own time, but it's actually one, one of my students who talks about budgeting their expenses while attending a community college by also having a part time job, too. It's actually really helpful. I'm going to go ahead and find it and drop it to you so you can take a look. Yes, please. So you, uh, you can write in chat. Uh, I don't think we'll have time uh, to show it, but please leave it in the chat for students to watch. And uh, another aspect of this. Um, of this question it reminded me of another question that uh, I had from my advisees is a lot of students, they are in our region, they finish school before they turn 18, so they apply as minors, and most of them are traveling to US as minors. Are there any concerns about that? What are some of the things that they need to be aware of when they are traveling, yeah, when they're only 17 years old, most of them? A lot of our international students are 17 years old when they um, they come to travel to the United States. Um, um, I would suggest uh, staying with a host family. So we'll help, uh, we help our students find housing because we do not have dormitories. So uh, we uh, have like a host family system that we run. Um, so staying with a family your first year and then transitioning into an apartment, but really kind of laying out the land of knowing where uh, having an idea of where you're going to be staying will be um, before you arrive will be extremely helpful. And then we also pick up our students from the airport and bring them to where they need to be. So we do everything's really personalized in like to our um, community college international students, which is something that does not offer at the university level, typically. Thank you. Yeah, let me add that yeah, to that for OCC. Yes, we accept students who are underage. So um, as long as you meet the equivalent of your high school completion or graduation, we know that students from um, in your country, you only have 11 years of secondary education. So therefore, yes, we have a lot of students who are 16 actually, <laughs> going on to 17. Um, we do recommend if you are younger to live on campus just because it's convenient. Um, but that's up to you. Um, and also, we forgot to address that part of the question about the jobs. Yes, you can work on campus if you're under 18 as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, some other questions regarding links to uh, webinars uh, to your universities to do research. So uh, Colleen already, already wrote hers. Uh, Christopher will also post some links in the chat. But both Colleen and Christopher and other universities are available at, uh, now at the fair. So after this webinar, you can talk to them at their booth. You can have a private chat or ask questions in public chat. So uh, feel free to use this opportunity. Um, and the question about financial aid based on financial needs for internationals, we already answered. We'll also be sharing this recording. So in case you missed anything, you will be able to review uh, the sessions that we had. So I will also mark it as live, as done. Uh, I would say that we have five more minutes. If you have any other questions, please write them in chat. Anything that is connected to two plus two system, community colleges, transferring after community colleges to complete your bachelor degree uh, education, please ask those questions in uh, chat or Q&A box. I had another question for you that we uh, want to kind of of frequently asked questions. Sometimes we receive requests from students who already completed their bachelor education or specialist education, and uh, or sometimes even master's education, but they would like to go to community colleges. What would you say to the students? Uh, how, why uh, is it an option for them to consider? Why would it be an option to consider and when, uh, if it will be an option? Good question. Um, yes, absolutely. I mean, we do accept non-traditional students. In fact, some of our international students already have bachelor's degrees and they come to community colleges for many different reasons. Actually, one of big reason is that for students who want to change their jobs or their careers or their major. Um, so they, instead of getting, getting a, um, another bachelor's degree in their home country, they come to our school to pursue maybe a certificate or an associate's degree because a certificate is geared towards more career focused education and also entering the workforce. So it's very common actually for a student. I have students, for example, who have engineering degrees. They come to OCC because they want to become a pilot or they want to, let's say, go into film and television. 
again, very, very common to do that. Another reason why students will come to a community college if they have a bachelor's degree is that they're trying to get to a specific graduate school that is completely different from what they've earned as a bachelor's degree already. So they'll come to community college because we have classes to make sure that they meet those requirements. Um, you know, so they're eligible to apply to that specific graduate program later on. So yes, they absolutely can. Um, I'm urging, um, you know, you know, everybody to really promote students who are support students that have are interested in this pathway. Um, it's just, uh, you just have to know how to articulate um, that when you apply for the visa, um, but we'll work with you on that as well. Yep, we also take um, students from various backgrounds. Um, mm -hmm. Some of our students want to have already have master's degrees from different countries or um, want to come to the US to use our uh, our English language training program. So to brush up on their English language skills to maybe advance their career back at home. Um, so we offer that for them. And then just like what Christopher said, we also have, um, you know, those two year degree certificate programs like automotive repair. So a whole career switch and getting a certificate. Uh, so a master's degree students, um, we absolutely do accept them, but just like we'll, we will work with you about um, just how to talk to a visa officer about why you would want to go to a community college after having a master's degree. Okay, hey, thank you. And looks like we have no other questions right now. But once again, please feel free to find Christopher and Colleen, as well as other university representatives now at their booths and ask them questions. They have also a lot of great information uploaded about colleges, about application process. If you have any questions, you can ask at info stand or you can ask advisors from your country at their booths. And thank you once again, Christopher and Colleen for this great presentation. Thank you so much for having us, Elena. Thank you so much. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Take care, students. We'll see you at our boots. <laughs>